Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Rogue Legacy 2 speedruns. Just chillin', get my theme down, figure my stuff out, you know, all that stuff. I will state that last time we got a pretty good speedrun <coughs> that I think I'm happy with. I got sub 40 feels like that's good enough for me. I If this is where I end, I'm happy, honestly. Um, obviously want to do better, but if I end there, I'm happy. And... I'm just trying to think what I want to do, like, that's distinct for the speedruns, because if I just keep doing the same exact speedrun, I mean, it is fun. I might start doing the thing where I retire a hero and, like, just have a random hero for my first character, that sort of thing, but we'll find out. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I've definitely liked not having the timer. It's like, I do this for fun, and it removes the stress element in a fantastic way. Also, it's been a long time since I've been sub-hour, or I haven't... Every run has been sub-hour, which is fantastic as well. How did I avoid the fireballs? I don't know. I was trying to grab that chest, and then, like, for some reason, I wanted to dash over their heads. And when I realized that was not an option, I just decided to kick off their heads, and that did not work well, as you may have noticed. Oh well, taking some damage, but getting gold, and we have not found the heirloom yet, so we're gonna be refueling our health quite quickly here. Once we find it. And I'm going this way because it's technically more likely. But while we're not fighting it, we're finding gold. Hey, always good. Always good. Alright. Let's get equipment. Leather chest. Mm. That is the least useful of the leather, I'm pretty sure. Actually, now that I think about it, because I'm trying to do precise math with IRAD and stuff, it might actually allow some of that precision math to work out. Anyways, there's the equipment I was looking for. And meat to go along with it. Wow, that was two very lucky pieces of meat right there. And yeah, I don't consider that as an about time. That is fortunate. Alright, and we get to have a lot of health with this character. That feels good. I mean, assuming we don't have other expenditures for my resolve. Worth. I'm okay taking some damage. Got a better weapon. Oof. Remember, once I find that item, once I find the heirloom, I'm going to be going back to full health. So, we also have that advantage. I'm going a bit slow, but it's like, ooh, not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry about going slow. It's kinda funny, I moved from timing my PBs to timing my average segments to just not timing myself at all. And every time has been like a mental improvement. Like, I'm not saying that they improved my speed, I'm saying they improved my feel for it. So yes, I kept the same question of the day um, as yesterday because it was a good question and other than you, Target Face, I don't think many people answered it. Um, there was someone else who said Warcraft 4 they would like to see, but um, they just, they're kind of unfortunate that the Warcraft series was taken over by Blizzard since then, apparently. So... Ugh. <laughs> you want the... Uh, this is all just the sequel of the question of the day. Question of the day 2. Electric Boogaloo. Another Banjo-Kazooie would be sick. And yeah, so another thing about that question of the day um, is what... I guess I should say, what sequels did you wish were better? And um, Nuts and Bolts would be a perfect example of 
why could that have not been more Banjo Kazooie? Why'd they have to take the Banjo Kazooie name, but not. Like. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of potential to question it deserves another day. That's exactly what I thought when I was like, what do I do for my next question of the day? Like, that could be a question of the week, and it wouldn't even be an issue. <clears throat> Oof. Yeah, thanks for being here, Target Face. Always glad to have you. So we're just chilling, doing our runs. We're just relaxing. Um, this is not one that I'm like, ooh, I need to do good. We already have a little poor. We already have a little poor luck. But we do have a lot of survivability. So this might be. Who knows? Maybe this is my one life run. Haven't done one of those in this patch, I should say. Yeah, I have not done a one life run since Irad appeared. faster to teleport back to the entrance. Which is unfortunate. This is the warm-up run. And this is the run that I enjoy myself on. Which is the intent of this. To enjoy myself. The fact that I also do fat do it fast is just a benefit along the way. We're gonna take that. It's a free chest. Oof. Hey, Lamech! How's it going, Lamech? We still have to find Book before we disappear, but we can hopefully find Book on our way to um, the Far Shores. So, we'll be heading up and to the right. That was the full damage. That's what I was looking for. The next improvement. There we are. Shield bash to finish. That made it easy. Full health finishing. Oh, I never even realized. You can mess with the little... The background element. You were able to mess with it. I had no idea. That was pretty cool. Right. So we're going to head up and then right. The reason being is I still want to find book. Hey, found book. All right, now we just head right. <laughs> well, I'm glad I did that. That was exactly what I intended. The fact that it was precise in the positioning is just fortune. But yeah, we have we have way more money than I expected. Oh, do you even realize the far shores was right there already? Well, that was easy. That was cool. Walking my way up town. And we already have enough money to buy architects, so we don't even have to worry about money, which is a nice little element. I could die right now and still get the madman to lock it down. Obviously, I'd like to beat Void Beast Barrett first, but like usually, like optimally, you actually get the money in Axis Monday. The chests are worth more and they're more likely to be in your path, so. Alright. Hmm. 
Oof. coming up well everything's doing amazing and we get a heirloom we move forward so yeah I will state I wish there was more I could do I'm really disappointed that the gone head route is gone to try to make sure people got echo kick before they entered the sticky and study but Got sniped. I don't appreciate it. We're all right at half health, thanks to that snipe. Because I feel like I got double sniped or something. No, there. I had no idea that was just going to be water. I thought for sure I'd hit get ground there. Like, there's a building here and everything. I thought for sure that was going to be ground. Oh, my gosh. Yep, so if you ever fall where there's um, no ground, if you ever fall into the water, you get to teleport back to the last time you touch the ground, which, as you saw, my little maneuvering skills was a while ago. Thank you, meat. I'm going to need to use you quite a bit. Alright. Well, we get a stop over here in the sun tower. Get it all seen. Get the visuals all taken care of. I can now teleport here properly. I now have a damage boosting heirloom to go with my damage recovery heirloom. And I have exactly enough um, income, I, exactly enough resolve to pick up the lilies without issue. Awesome. But that means that is my last heirloom. But it's resolve well spent. Ah. I feel like that is. I'm getting more misfortune here than actual bad play. That was probably bad play. And that was my eyes were down low when I needed to be up high. I just did not expect... This is one of those new new parts of this area and I really had no idea there were, they could spawn an enemy there. Oh my gosh. Well, there goes my defensive relic. Um... Oh, I go down. I go down. That was unfortunate. That was just unfortunate, okay? Panic attacks or compulsive gambling? I'm going with panic attacks. I think I can... I get hit... When I get hit, it's like, it's already an issue. I think I could handle, like, just don't get hit lol sort of things. Um, Blaze Bellows is a strong spell. Allows me to go more intelligence build. Leverage my lower gold count. No. I was thinking about going mage. I was legitimately thinking about going mage. I probably should have. That would have been pretty cool. And I have just enough for the leather weapon. Oh. Not enough for the leather weapon. Alright, leather helmet it is. Alright, given that I ha did not have enough for even the leather weapon, I think I should have just gone mage there. Oh well. Oh well. But yeah, that was two rooms I did not expect, and one of the rooms had the worst kind of elite. Huh. <sighs> oh well. Yeah, it occurs. It occurs. Even with the gold... 
Reduction of lockdown, we still have a plus 19 here. We still have a plus 5 elsewhere. Alright. Remember. Oh my gosh. So this is the problem with panic attacks. I just... I didn't realize there'd be so many enemies right next to each other right there. My mistake, I guess. And yep, they reset... So, in case you're wondering, if you die in a room that has treasure chests in it, the chests reset. Given that this place is considered a single room, every chest we picked up on the way to the right is reset then. So that was misfortune when I got hit there. That was me not knowing about the enemy above. But now I do. And now we have to deal with a dangerous area that I did not know how... How am I... Like, I swear, I swing for the chasers. And I just don't hit them in time. Okay, this is getting infuriating. This one room, this one spot, this, that was the exact spot I died in the last time. The exact spot I died in the last time. That's annoying. That's a problem. Anyways, this run's starting to die. That's the sort of thing that kills a run. Because now I have minus, I get half the amount of gold, and we haven't even been the second boss yet. Oof. I don't reset run, so we're playing this through, but now I'm actually starting to get nervous that I'm not going to beat it within an hour. Which... Mm. Then, then again, this is the time to learn these um, places. Get a used to what the new challenges are. Because my whole issue is I don't have experience with facing this area. But yeah, you saw there. All the enemies were way over above or below. That's why I dashed to the right and took all that damage at the beginning. Oof. Just seems like they could fly towards me faster than they usually could. That's what that's what it feels like at least. Could very much just be a lapse in memory. Alright, note to self. Take the chasers absolutely seriously. Fish, don't log on me. Alright. Here we go. We actually made it. The well, moment we get past that door, everything else was a joke. Uh. Alright. Oh, Here we go, we got max. So the reason I'm targeting this is not only just because it's good to single target, but because um, combo only lasts as long as you continuously hit them. That was unfortunate. That was me needing to get up to avoid their attack and then having to go down to avoid the other attack. Just bad timing, really. Probably could have avoided it, but nonetheless, like, it happened. I'm not gonna cry over spilled milk. Got enough. I got enough health still, so managing. 
Alright, and we got a thousand gold from that. We did already hit the minimum gold prerequisite, thank goodness, but... Yeah, we're gonna be needing to buy Leather Sword. Um, I think that, yeah, I think um, the equip weight increase of Leather Weapon is, or of Scholar Weapon is not worth it. If we find Leather Cape or Leather Trinket, I think we actually go for Leather, um, Leather Unity for the extra resolve. I'm not really a fan of um, the double jump stuff, so I'm just going to choose not to get it. Alright, come on. Ah! There we are. Barely not high enough. Nothing to the left. To the right there. A lily room. With a lily we cannot acquire. Great. Didn't know if I was falling in there, so I wanted to put a shield up for security. Bop my head in here, and we leave, because there's nothing. Well, looks like we're going right. Oop. Awesome, found far, sh far shores. Alright. I think we're going to find the mob before we go look for that other lily. So, now we have double jump. So that's good. Alright. We have a magic build right now, so we do end up using the fungal spread very effectively. It's kind of funny having um, a magic build with a KO punch. Or with a KO strike. I just realized we actually have... Um, the proper the proper um, knockouts um, below the special available if I go back to find it. Probably not worth it, but it's kind of interesting because what makes it worth is having combo. Huh. Make it fun. Make it interesting. But I think I'm gonna prioritize recovering all the golds we've lost. I'm already staying in the room. How are you, Kami? Both times the bounces just put in bad positions. Technically, I decide where the bounce is, but it's like the precision was just an inch off and it punished me every time.
Alright. Found a maw. Now the problem is, the lily that I have left to find is way off in the middle of nowhere. So I have to either find a new lily, or I have to go back to the entrance. Uh, do I grab a book just to refresh my health? Preserve what little money I have left to acquire. I think my answer is no. I think I still want this lily. I think we grab book later still. Could be the wrong decision. Could very well be the wrong decision. Well, found the other lily. Don't, never punished. Never punished. Alright. Okay. There we go. So this pops open the door. And now we can head over to... Stiggy and Study. We do a little exploratorium. Hopefully get some more money. Anyways, it looks like... Ooh. Warden Helm. Nope. There we go. Moving. Apple, I appreciate you. Nope, we do not have a cape yet. So we have an intelligence based build with no cape. Always unfortunate when your equipment does not pan out. I'm so glad those seeds only deal 58 damage now. They used to completely kick your face in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they like halved the damage of those orbs. Oop. We're, friend we're friendlier than usual this time. At least friendly enough. Obviously, we're not optimal boy orbs, but... Optimal void orbs is they go into the little hole I make and stay in there until the fight's over, but... I think that means two orbs have to do that. One of the orbs did, so I got positive there. And the other orb... At the very least, didn't get so far in my way that I actually slow down. Because I only slow down a little bit because of it. Don't know about the apple, but I'm not going to be detouring back for it. So, come on. All right, found gone heads. Oh, that's an actual chest. Alright, here's another apple, and this one's actually within range. Rage tincture is worth, because my shield bash gives me um, 
the iframes that are needed to activate that. All right, we have Enoch and Gone Heads found. That's fantastic. So let's actually just find Murmur, and then I'll go kill Gone Heads. I have not found Murmur yet, correct? So Murmur, the only thing we know is that the entrance is at the upper part of the room, which means it's closer there. Oof. Going to Gone Heads is the fastest route, so we're just going to go to Gone Heads, kill Gone Heads, and do that again. Oh well. Oh well. I've made a slight change in plans. Why kill Gone Heads and get nothing? Why kill Nama and get some money? Yes, 50% isn't much money, but... It's only going to get worse. And so if there's ever a time to kill Nama, it's while the gold is still something. While it's not 100% lost from purchases. As long as I keep combo up, my um, sword damage is perfectly acceptable. I do have to keep combo up, though, which means I have to keep attacking even when it's dangerous. And like there, I just lost combo. up the attack from landing, so I can just wave out. Still stand by my decision of going for Namak first. Alright. Well, I do need to grab book now. And let's just do Gone Heads well. Have book be the only purchase I need. Alright. But yeah, just don't want to take too much damage while trying to find Murmur, so. Here we go, this is my last heirloom. And with this heirloom grabbed, it's all the game. spinning pinwheels. Well, wow. so usually I um, swing while I'm out of it, and the sword stays out long enough for me not to have to worry about that, so that's why I didn't even dodge.
What? Four health off max. I don't think that matters. Um, my next fight is going to be dealing precisely 100 damage on every hit. We'll see how it does when racked up against Murmur. Oh well. Wow, uh, couldn't keep it. Just barely missed it there. Ah. Oh. Press the wrong button, so I meant to jump over and I accidentally hit my dash above me. Like darkly above it. Yep, didn't matter, because I don't think the difference between 50 health and 46 helps me survive anything up in this these areas. Like, the lowest damage here is 50. So... Oh well. Those hits were my mistake. No, no, no. Richard, main menu. And with that, I am glad I actually detoured for Nama then. Got some money first. And it's still better to go here, which is really unfortunate. For, like, positioning standards. Whew. Alright. Yes, piece of meat allows me to survive one hit, and that might be the difference, so. Problem is, Murmur could be basically anywhere here, as far as I can tell. Pizza, the fabled weapon that failed me last time I tried it. People said so many good things about pizza. And I played with pizza. You know, with Bell, it might have actually been worthwhile. Oh well. I already passed it. I ain't going back. That 46 health for the rest of this character's life. Unless I somehow find... I just walked by an apple, I just realized. I don't even care. Grabbing that meat. Just I thought meat dropped for some reason. Ooh, I thought I had dash back, I did not.
Yeah, pizza might actually be good because of the multi-hit effect of it, but... I just don't want to rely on that right now. Hey, Vibes, how's it going, man? Glad to have you here. Poof. So we had a pretty bad start with this, so we're just trying to recover. And we're recovering by taking it hard. Glad, glad you're doing good, man. Glad you're doing good. I mean, every day's a chill day for me, but, like, today... All it is is that this first run went very far south, so that's still, like, on my nerves a bit. But other than that... I went to shield block Enoch, and the th the explosion I was in released before I was ready for the dash. Oof. Magma mass and emotional dysregularity. That's a good. That's a good character. What's the plan for the stream today? Same as, same as yesterday. I am planning to just play some speed runs, and once I'm done with the speed runs, I'm going to do some um, Magic the Gathering. So with Enoch's kill, I might be able to buy um, duelists again, but I'm gonna have to kill Enoch on this life specifically. Next life, I think I have enough of a gold reduction that even Enoch's not enough to purchase the duelist because I also need to get that plus one health vitality increase. So. That was two cases where I threw out my shield, and I did not hit what I thought I would hit. In one action. That's, like, in the first phase of this fight, that occurred twice. Getting way over here because I just know the chasers will ruin me if I give them the opportunity to. That was me misjudging distances. By the way, what's your opinion on how our two updates have been going? Good or bad direction? So, generally speaking, like, good. But there have been a few things that I'm just like... So, in description, when they built this game, there was the intent of having this be a Metroidvania. This has been moving far more linear than I'd like it to be if we're going to call it Metroidvania. And the reason why, why that is, is because... From the I'm um, listening to feedback, they had to listen to people that were having trouble finding things. And where exploration and finding finding the stuff on your own is the thing that makes a Metroidvania really stand out as its own like genre. Not everyone's up for that kind of experience. And I feel they're listening to the people that aren't up for that experience. And it, this is becoming not a Metroidvania. Like, I, I have to do boss number three. Like, technically, I could do boss number three first. But it's just... There's no incentive to. There's no incentive. I can't... Like, I have to get every heirloom. 
in order if I find a shortcut so that I can get into, um, so even if I find one of the pathways so I can enter and, um, get Void Dash early, I can't grab Void Dash without Echo Kick. I can't even get the Heirloom without Echo Kick, and, like, if you're going to get Echo, and, like, you used to be able to face Nava without getting Double Jump. Now, they've, like, they failed, but they tried to make it mandatory to get Double Jump first. I think they legitimately tried. Ooh. So, like, in those aspects, I have some concerns, but in every other... A I want to be clear, in just about every other aspect there is for this game, I have been proud of their movement. Like, their movements have been great. Like, when you compare this to Rogue Legacy 1, it's way better. In addition, there is a very good reason that I'm still playing this game right now, because it's super fun. Like, you know, my complaints are, hey, this isn't a 100% out of 50, you know? But... Like, it's good to note, but at the same time, it's... Like, it's the lesser complaints that if they don't get addressed... Oh, well. Gabe's still gonna be good without it. Or should be, at least. Like, technically, yeah, you can low percent, you can get this without having to do all the things I'm doing, but it's like the system is very well designed to prevent that in a way that the pre um, Metroidvanias, like, as far as I care, that goes against the Metroidvania spirit, but, like, that might just be because of a thing of taste, not a thing of actual truth, you know? So, I'm sure the game, like, I think... Really, if they just removed the phrase, um, Metroidvania, I think every, I think, like, my main complaint with it would be solved. So, that's good. That's something. Hmm. Yeah, this is a good game. Like, again, I am playing this for a good reason, but... And, like, the people are, like, people are going to love this game. I understand that entirely. It's just, I was looking for something specific, and it's becoming less and less that specific thing. They're setting expectations that might not be met. Exactly. Like, it's alright. Like, this game does not have to be Metroid. This doesn't have to be a Metroidvania. It would still be a good game. But if you're... But, like... That means, don't tell us it's Metroid. Like, it's a great game. Like, seriously, compare this to Hades, not Metroid, and you have a winning theme, which is quite an insane thing to say, like, compare it to Hades to get yourself better results, but what I'm saying is it's comparable to Hades in a way. There was still a fireball in that corner. Uh, but yeah. Alright, so now I always have a knight in this corner, and when I get to the boss at the top, I can turn this into always a duelist in the corner. All we have to do is beat, finish this run before the one hour mark, and given I haven't even been streaming for an hour yet, I have my hopes up high, and my head down low. I have the damage boost. I have the class I want. I could switch it to Barbarian if I feel that, that the extra health is actually necessary. Might be. Barbarian is pretty good at traversal because the shout just, like, is a solution for all directions. Ooh, I just realized. Yeah, I could, like, give the soup to a 
class that needs that for um, maneuvering than their default talent. Okay, hold up. Did I lose half my health in a single hit? I think I lost half my health in a single hit. Oh, I can't even get in there because that slime's making a trail. And this thing's preventing me from breaking through the trail. Drowned weapon. Good weapon if there was a any percent chance of me equipping it. I just, I know I'm going to need my shield as I go into this room, so I just decided not to use it. Even though I could have cleared these guys out faster, because I need to drop, drop. Get around all of this. Still going up. That is my least favorite thing to go through. I'm going to just hope that the pathing over here. Nope. I prayed. Yeah, this is one of the worst things because it's just like so many things are coming at you at random directions, you have to just wait for the timing to be right. And... Alright, shield's recharged. I wasn't sure if it was going to be recharged yet, so... I just played defensively because I didn't have time to... Looking down was a great way to get hit. Whew. Oh, there it is! Just don't make a mistake here. Awesome. No point in opening the chests. I have... All my gold taken, and I do not um, want to get delayed by equipment pauses. Alright, so now I can switch it over from Knight to Duelist and be happy. Well, not bad. A lot of things I could have done there. Oh well. But yeah, I like the duels for this boss. You have Flame Barrier. I'm gonna go with this knight. We don't have any money to spend here, so we just keep moving. You know, because I'm going intelligence space, I'm wondering if just going mate, like locking a mage, and just ho banking on getting good spells is worth the time loss, is worth the possibility. Hmm. Not gonna worry about that right now. But yeah, we have enough that the duelist survives with two health remaining, so that's good. Didn't turn around, and that will have kill that will have hit me due to the lack of turn around. Go.
Them all exploding, it's good to know that when they all explode at once, there's actually a safe spot. That is the only safe spot. Alright. And with that, we kept it sub hour, which is what I was looking for after those poor deaths. So. Hey. Good little way to wake up. And great to know that I still can keep it sub hour. Uh, that feels good. Just keep it at sub hour sometimes. Sometimes, like, I will say, sub hour is a really good time for a lot of people. So, being able to keep it sub hour just feels good. Just feels good. And sometimes that's all you need, you can do, and sometimes that's good enough. Lo the games that have good, that have big variants, you can't get world record every time. So you just gotta look for what you can go for. And going for sub one hour is a great is a theme that's like a good time lock to put on yourself. In these are sort of games. All right. Whew. Three, two, one, go. Keep moving. Oh. <laughs> I accidentally started new... Uh, oh well. Here's the important thing. Until you finish the tutorial, the timer doesn't start for in-game timer. Which is why we really just need to make it so that um, when you hit skip tutorial here, so you hit enter and go at the same time, so it'd be like, go. Oh, okay. One more. Then it'd be like, go. And that might be a better way of timing it. Hmm. Again, I was on the side of time the tutorial instead of making it skippable, but I completely understand why the opposing faction won out in this war. It's not like a war that I need, I was willing to fight to the death for. Ooh. Right, there's the top. Just want to make sure there was actually a door up there, because sometimes there isn't. Awesome. Just want to make sure... Yep. Just want to make sure staying up here was better than teleporting back to the entrance, because sometimes that is the case. That it's better to just teleport back. Okay. Well, if I'm here, might as well get the chest. Alright. So there is that path just left and down. So, might as well stay here. Finish off my pathing. Don't worry, you have a few iframes when you pop out of those. So, you could just go through. Not caring. Not a teleport worth, or not a trade worth taking. Okay, now it's faster to return to main menu. <laughs> so I still need to go up to get the sticky and steady entrance, but otherwise I should have just teleported back. Not much way of me figuring that out. Whew.
the knockback of my shield hitting actually mattered in, like, a speed sense. Because I would have not made it up. Oh, is this... Almost faster to return to main menu again. Might actually be faster to return to main menu again. Oh, did my shield bash kill the fireball guy? Wow. Sharon's Trial. I have never seen this. Defeat 15 enemies and gain a 20% gold ore and aether bonus. Alright. Well, I die in one hit and I kill everything pretty quickly. Otherwise. Alright, how many do I need to kill? 15? It's quite a few enemies. Especially as a speedrunner who doesn't face too many enemies along the way. I have to kill them at this point, because damage is fatal until I do. Good to know things of that in the game. I actually did not know about that mechanic, that item, so now I do. Got Scholar Cape, best equipment. One of the best equipment in the game. Alright, so we're going to this heirloom, and our hope is that through this heirloom, we face enemies just the right way. 10, 11, I'm trying to just math it out. Just gotta be not stupid, because tensions are a bit high right now. With the whole bargain theme active. Alright, two daggers and it's over. There we are. That felt good. Alright, just as active. Now I get a gold bonus. That's awesome. And I have a gold bonus. And I have Serrated Handles Bargain. Oof. Perfect character. If I could just keep it together, this is the perfect character. But yeah, risking Fatality for a 20% gold bonus seems a little bit much. But also seems very cool. Like... I just feel, I feel like it should have been 25%, or just slightly higher, but, I mean, I'm not the one doing the math, and I'm willing to take it anyways, because I'm at a skill level where that's not an issue, or not a big issue at the very least. I don't think I ever found book. We have two of the bar so two of the bargain level relics. I think they should allow bargain rel level relics to be if they're going to make relics a random theme that you can get. I feel like the bargain level relics should be of the same level. All right, I still need to find book, don't I? Yep. So I'm going to find book before I go on the grounds that I need, you know. 
I'm gonna get a full heal once I enter the other heirloom. Alright. Let's head down and to the right, because we already checked all the ways up, so... Oop. Let's pop up in the chest. Get myself some money. So yeah, we're at 2k gold, and we haven't even entered Axis Monday yet. That is good money. Found it. Awesome. And I could pop open that chest as I dash through. Alright. So yeah, we have good gold increase. We have good damage. Like, the only thing this guy is missing is health. We did not find any apples along the way. No places to believe. Like, instead of apple, we got money. Which I think is a fair trade. Apples cost money. So. Hmm. Who have thought the money for an apple was 20%? Huh. Alright. Well, now we're... So yeah, we're going to be good on cash. We're going to be good on equipment. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. Just miss that entirely, but it doesn't matter. Uh. All right. Whew. 185 resolve still, so that means if we take into account the lilies, I still have 65 resolve to spend. And since we have Surrey Hound's Bargain, I think we just face Namah the moment we get the opportunity to. Also, yeah, if we get war drums, the fact that the, um, Sharon's Bargain, whatever it's called, um, is still a relic, but costs me zero resolve, it's pretty nice. Chasers are terrifying, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. This is one of those new ones I think you go through here. Yep, center. We're gonna be good on cash. Or at least, theoretically, we should be good on cash. I guess this theory assumes success, but... Honestly, I think that's a fair assumption. Alright. We've taken zero damage along the way. Oof. That's good. That's good. Oh. Just realized my doggo was hiding in a corner in front of the room. Game too easy? Oof. Sell that to my last run, but... Doing good now. Definitely doing good right now. Oof. But yeah, one of the things that's making this easy is because we have Serrated Hound's Bargain to kill everything that would deal the damage in time. Hello. Ah. 
blobfish in your threatening physics engine. Alright, we have another one of those strange rooms, but it seems like we could just jump up and use that spike trap. Just kill that guy so I don't have to deal with him. There we are. Awesome. You've been here for a while, you know me and my lurking. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough, Penthos. How have you been doing, by the way, Penthos? How have you been doing? Awesome. And we're at 3,000 gold before we grab the gold here. 1,500 plus 40%. Yeah, I think that gets me to 5,000 gold already. So, the fight could have been cleaner if they actually stuck together, but I kept it clean and nonetheless. It wasn't fan It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't elegant, but it was clean. We did not get dirty. Which means we might be getting the maw. Which would be very nice. Oof. Oh. Wasn't even holding down right arrow. I'm like, there's like a lag in my movement, and it's because I wasn't hitting the move button. Okay, so this is not one that really needs Amaterasu's son, but, like, I still like Amaterasu's son. Just makes killing things super easy, so I can just attack and ignore enemies a lot of the time. Because my spell is Fireball, that might have been a mistake, but, oh well. Let's do this right. There we are. Awesome. Also, I have a lot of resolve to spend. I still have 20 resolve even after that, with no penalty. That's not high enough to get up, so I... There we are. Oof. There's Far Shores. Okay. Nice amount of health left. Just barely. So I think my plan on the way back is literally to shield block the spikes to get myself a better positioning. Actually, no, I have double jump. I could just jump up there this time. I don't have to worry about Echo Kick as badly. Like, I think it was the... Yeah. I'm going through that room without double jump was actually much more daunting than with it. Ooh, I backed up just perfectly to not get damaged. And I feel really good about myself for doing that. Woo. Yeah. Stray Hail's Bargain, just the fact that it allows you to kill things so much faster, makes it so that killing enemies on your way through actually is viable. And that just changes so much. That changes so much about your playstyle and allows you to just enter fights and win fights and just 
It's such a good theme. I just realized, if I find one of those... I think I found a spell trader for... Um, that I didn't take, because... Alright, 120 damage is a little much, unfortunately. Because it... Yes, the damage doubled. So, given that we just grabbed the heirloom, it ain't worth. If it was before I grabbed the heirloom, it would have been worth, though. Ooh. Need to go left again. Then down, it looks like. That's a chest, but I think we're good on cash. We just need to get out. We just need to worry about survival and finding the lily and the mom. And yes, we are. We happily, very happily, fighting the mob with this belt, with this setup. There's Nama. Had a feeling. Had a gut feeling, and the gut was correct. This means if we find something like Wardrums now, when we go to Stiggy and Study, we have enough to resolve to take it without penalty, which... That was a little tall. I thought that, that was under the platform. My bad. All right. Well, I'm not having algesia, so it's oxythymia or CIP plus synesthesia. Hmm. I'm gonna go with this one. I like synesthesia, and the double trait just gives me gold increases. Really. This is a good spell, but I don't think we go spell build. I think we actually go damage build. So. Oof. Nicked your toe. Yep. Happens. Happens. Looks like we can just do both. We just do a balance build, honestly. Oh, we have Scholar Cape. With Scholar Cape, we do a little of both. We're going to try Duelist against Nama. See how Duelist feels. I know Duelist used to be amazing against Nama. Still stuck at night because I haven't unlocked any other classes yet. That's actually kind of funny. Uh, I think yeah, this character kills the maw and then goes to the city and study. I don't know how much health they have, but we're just gonna play defensive, I guess. Unfortunate. The character had an even bigger gold increase of 20%, and had Surrey Hounds bargain, so they'd be good in the next area.
Oh, mistake. Oh well. Yeah, we're assuming we die in one hit. Hey man, I just got home from work and it's 10.30 p.m. 14 hour day for you. Oof. 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 Well, I'm glad you're- I'm glad the day's over. I'm glad you got home where you could get your rest, man. Be happy about the feeds you could be happy about. Oof. Trust me, I'm so glad. Oof. Glad to hear it. Alright. Well. I thank you. 120 health breeds me near full. Because of this thing's proximity to the entrance and Enoch, I can actually wait on picking that up. If I feel I can live to see gone heads. That, that, in case you're wondering, is fantastic positioning for the heirloom. Oof. How's the stream going? Any nice improvements, time-wise, technique-wise? So yesterday, I got myself um, a... A sub 40 minute run, which for how long I've been away feels great. Um, just drop by shortly. How are your runs going lately? So, yeah, yesterday I had a sub 40, 40 minute run, which for being away as long as I was, that feels really good. Yes, I know Mindful Line, yours is faster. Um, it's a 38 minute on the spot, is my current PB for this patch. So, there's that. And I've just been, like, experimenting around with a lot of things. Alright, so we have Murmur. Let's go grab Gom Heads. Um, one of the things is I'm definitely, like, I've been using, um, I've been using Duelist a lot more. And it's been actually working out really well. So, that just leads me to using Duelist even more in more situations to see how good the class is just in general. Alright, there's Gone Heads. I should be able to kill this boss without much issue. Emphasis on should. Oof. Alright, I'm going to assume next hit kills, so... Should is a strong word, not gonna deny that. Should is not the... is kind of a strong word. Alright. 
So we got that. We have Nama. So now we can grab... So the feat is we saved... Because of its positioning, we were able to save um, Void Dash for now. Which means we can now, you know, get it. No issues. <coughs> That's a way to die. That's a way to die. Alright. You have Magma Mass. That's a good spell. Uh, we're facing Enox soon, so... On the bright side, we did kill Gone Heads. We did kill Gone Heads, as, it, as intended. Did I get any more equipment? I don't think so, but I just want to confirm. Yep. Alright. So, one more health buff, and I'm going to be able to survive two hits from Irad when I use them with the Duelist. You're going to take a shower and head to bed, just wanted to drop by and say hello? Well, I appreciate seeing the hello, man. I appreciate it. Um, have a nice rest of your stream, and go smash them records. Alright. Thank you very much, Suicude. Thank you very much for the enthusiasm. That... Literally, take a step forward. Roll. To roll avoids water damage as well. Like, there were so many ways I could have avoided that death. And if I avoided that death, I'd have so much more gold right now. Or once I finish this life here. Bit rough. Bit bow wow. Alright. Whew. Right, this isn't... This isn't a knight. I can't, um... Oh, I'll just... There we are. Well, we have a lot of intelligence, which makes being a barbarian a little rough, but... Oh, well. They have a good spell. Even if they can't cast that spell as often as other classes. Oof. Alright. Huh. <sighs> Deep breath. It happened. It went to pass. Alright. Okay, move forward. Got kind of lucky with those, not going to lie. Just freaking, yep. I'm like, they're so close to dead. Kind of annoyed that I took that damage bow. Well, I can kill Enoch with this much health. Then I can grab the book and head over to Irad. Have full health climbing up the sun tower. Alright. Whew. Whew. 
this would give me an additional hit if I took the health, but I'm just trusting as a barbarian, I have the damage output, the survivability to get through Enoch without issue. Oh my gosh. We'll make it stupid things like that. Doesn't help. The fact that I killed um, chasers as well with that. Just barely not avoiding them in time. go. Don't want to die from that because I've been barely avoiding fiends. I wasn't going to ask you to take a hit from Murmur, but then you took one. Easy data. <laughs> Flame Barrier. Alright, that's all I need to hear. That's all I needed to hear. Flame Barrier. Alright. Money's getting low. Money's getting low. I don't appreciate the low money. Alright. Gotta remember, I also have to grab Book. We could grab it later. I'm not even sure if I did any runs on this patch, but it shouldn't be different time-wise. The only thing I can remember was the no double jump slash book run. Yep. I remember hearing about that. You did that in 3754. I think you literally beat my time here by six seconds, so... Well done on that. There we go. This is more the line that I was expecting to see. I had no idea a single strike was enough to bring it to half. Well, level 63 Murmur does one more damage than level 60 Murmur. That's good to know. explodes and deals damage. Alright. Well, we'll grab Book after we kill... after we climb up the tower, I guess. Because... No reason to grab Book now. And... I'm at full health. I might be able to use the fact that there's chests to my left or right to realize when a path is incorrect before I enter the room. I'm unsure if that would actually work out, but it's good to believe. Alright. I 
guess this is an inside job today. That does not connect above. Unfortunate for me. It is saying good. Because I now longer have double jump to help myself. You bounce if something goes wrong. on the top. Problem is, a single hit kills us. Uh, for some reason, I thought I could get under there in time. Uh... I'm going to try climbing with the Duelist, see how the Duelist feels for a climber, because I know I can roll to dodge clouds whenever I hit them. And with five... So, with seven vitality upgrades total, I survived two hits. So, I recognize that's not optimal. It's better to just not get hit, but until I get, like, perfected there, I'm grabbing the extra vitality for the Duelist. All right. Skipping books saves time, and after I d did some math, skipping either could also save time if you're lucky enough with... Yeah, I gotta... We... With rolling the right classes. Alright. Alright, whatever. This gives me an easy way up. Alright, this is the last room. And I can use the book to refresh my health after this, which is very nice. I need to get the book anyways, so I as well just grab it now. Making sure I'm at 100% health, because at 100% health, I survive the second hit with two health remaining. Alright. Funnily enough, that row was a bit casually, but did help with learning to respond to chat. Yep. Always good to get better at that sort of stuff. Well, I think I miss. Yeah. I'm missing the first cycle. As seen there. Oh well. Whoop.
That was a three cycle. Feels bad, man. Well, I think that was a two cycle, but still, it was not. I do recognize that wasn't zero. If we still believe in zero cycle as a concept, then that was a two cycle. Oh, I don't have a talent or a weapon with the range to kill those guys in a single swing. Alright, well, we're at full health. That's the important part. I want to make sure I was at full health because I took some damage, and if I'm not, and because it's 112 damage with each hit, um, I'd say that going once is zero cycle, as you don't need to wait for everything, but could have counted incorrectly. I mean, it's also possible, I wasn't, whatever the case, whatever the case, the fact is it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. Yeah, no way I get enough money to purchase any weapons worthwhile. Oh my gosh. What a great way to start this off. Alright, whatever. Let's do the runs because they're fun. Took damage the same way. Thought I had enough swings to hit the Shadow Fiend as it came out, and was incorrect. I did notice that you got one lily before either, but I assume you know how to get both. Yeah, someone told me you figured out in chat, and just, like, gave a basic description, and I'm like, oh, I get the idea. And so, I, it took a few tries for one of, for the one where you have to kick off the um, projectiles, but I, was, I managed to do both. Yes, I managed to do both. Alright, well, we kept a 4501. That's still a good time. That's still a good time. As long as we're keeping it sub-hour, I am happy. And we did better than sub hour of, as you see there. Mm. Three, two, one, go. A little fast, yes, a little fast, but I want to just keep going because I have been going over time and I want to go under, like, for how much I stream. I kind of want to go under time for once. You have to go now. Good luck on your next run. Thank you very much, Mindful Line. Good luck on yours, man. Oof, I appreciate the time. Icarus wings, ooh. Hmm, 
I wonder if a lucky Icarus wanes, how that works for the low percent run. But, yeah, I don't feel comfortable using Icarus wanes, so... I don't. Alright. Leather weapon. Good. Good. Found the neck. Leather cape. Leather chest. Alright. Fair enough. Hey. So let's see. Right. My big question is this. Do I go for the... Do I just face the boss now? Or do I just face the boss later? Nope. Myself, my health back. Oh, I should have. Right, I'm. For some reason, because my last one had Soraya Hound's Bargain, I'm just like, you only need to throw one. That was a bad hit, by the way. But we recovering. Alright, yeah, let's go kill Lamac. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go find Sticky and Study, and then I'm gonna, from Sticky and Study, teleport to Lamac. That's my play. That's my plan. I think that does uh, slightly faster. Oh well. Not gonna matter too much in the long run, but good to do. Yeah. Beautiful. I think that was a good choice, because it looked like Stygian was pretty close, so... Grabbing Stygian saved me a teleport back. Now we head right, and a little up to try to find Book and Far right, and far Shore's exit. Alright. Yeah, this little, the fact that you can interact with this little background element is actually a nice touch. You know, it's just the tiniest of interaction. It's a nice touch. Shows that people care about these things. It's one of those things that, like, if it never, if they never did it, most people would not notice. But someone decided that detail was necessary. And I appreciate that, per whoever that person was. Oh, right, I don't have Echo Kick.
Oh my gosh. This is sad. This is getting sad. I have to apple for protection instead of health, and that makes me feel bad about my, that. Uh, if I just didn't take that last hit, I would have believed. I would have believed and gone for it. Fatal blow, but good hits. I could have easily avoided that just by throwing out my shield. So. Misfortune, but misfortune of my own doing. Alright. I'll just grab the meat from that lantern later. This one here. There we go. At least not dead. Yep, basically. At least not dead, but definitely unfortunate. It's like, I could have been better, but at least it's not. Like, I didn't hit the bottom. On a scale of 1 to 10, it's not a 10. <laughs> Get out of the way. That's one way of getting them out of the way. have as much money as I'd hope to have by this point. Oh well. Alright. Whew. Sticking deep breaths. I was lower. Oh well. Not dead. Gosh darn it. Alright, we survived one hit. And we cannot lose. If I die in the second hit, this run goes very far south. Because I do not have the money for the architect. 
but we're 600 away, so not worth detouring for it. And I'm not about to sacrifice the book right now. Not when I can take a hit. It does have to be good. And I've been good before. I've been good many a time. I've done this no hit. And it wasn't like an anomalous thing. Just I've done this no hit. Yeah, just with the two of them right next to each other going the close range just seemed like it could end very badly, so I decided not to. Ooh. What am I doing not dodging that attack? There we go. There we go. Alright. Definitely made it closer than it needed to be. Definitely made it closer than it needed to be. But hey, now we're at 30k. And we have a leather weapon and a leather chest. Alright. So a leather weapon. Yes, we're going for far. Either far shores is gonna give us our health back, or we're dying in this area. That's my two options. I am not going back for healing. I'm gonna wait for that to die. Yep. Let's make sure I don't have to deal with that. No book to read to put the to take those nightmares into their nap time. Oh, wrong direction. Hmm. Let's respond to it like it was a warg, and... Alright. We're gonna go with Ed Muscle Fibers between the two. Alright. Still going strong. We have 3,000 gold. We can actually spend it on what I want to. We're going to go strength build because we have a leather weapon at least. And that will, yeah, leather weapon plus strength base um, allows you to do book fat, fast book. Nine, nine, nine. Mmm. Why not? So let's see. He gives me four armor to equip the leather chest. Just making sure it's set at night. Alright, there we are. So now we have a night lock. Hmm. We have high jump, where we lack double jump. Oof. Dude, Kraken Style, how's it going, man? Thanks for the raid, man. Woo! That was, uh, that's awesome. We're just doing some speed runs right now. So, for those... They changed the spell. Oh, because I have the spell that was offered here. Ooh, let's see if I can do this. Ah. Not with... Was not ready for that with... Um... The high jump. Ah. Okay, we're just gonna come back to that later. Well, unfortunately, I feel the need to, do, but... 
Getting a little unfortunate with the damages, but keep moving. Let's see, we have the lily there. Can I get this lily using high jump? Nope. Alright. No one expects the Kraken Inquisition! Alright, this is the room I died in last time, because this enemy here, I respond to as if it was a warg. And... Oh my gosh. You find double jump ASAP. So for those who don't know, when you get the special abilities, in this case double jump, um, you get a full heal with it. There it is. Here it is. And the double jump is always the far right corner, which is why I was heading to the right. And up when it's not right. Alright. How's the stream going? Going good. Just a chill day. Nothing like super spectacular, but nothing bad. Nothing bad. And that's good enough for me. Let's see if I can do it. Yep. So, this character has a high jump, which allows it to do some tricks that can't be done normally. Like, as you saw there, jumping straight to that platform. That was a mistake. Alright, well, I didn't get punished for that mistake, at least. Ooh. Gosh. I should probably... You know what? I'm going to experiment right now. Nope. Just barely not enough. Ah. Uh, oh well. We lost a little time. Let's go back to the normal route. Would have been cool if with high jump I could have skipped that. That's okay. <laughs> that was funny. You're gonna lurk for me? Thank you, I appreciate it, Kraken. I appreciate it. At least, how's it going, Spiver? How's it going? Glad to have you around, too. Alright, so we have a lily below us, a lily over there, and I have a path down I need to take. Oh. Ooh. I'll check over here real fast. Because Nama could be anywhere, basically, except for left, but... When there's a big area this way... Alright, here's one of the lilies. Unfortunately, we took some damage along the way. But we got meat! Meat compensates. Had a feeling I was going to get unlucky and run into that. So, had the shield up just in case. Making some mistakes. All right, so I have the t I have two lilies. That's all you need. Now I just gotta. So there was a path down from here. Uh. Well, time to go back the direction I just left. Hmm. The odds are low that that was the case, but. That was the case. And yes, we do have to find them out before we leave, because if I die with these little in my hand, then they are lost. You know what? It's faster if I just teleport back to um, Far Shores. Like, that path was going nowhere. If that's the path... I have so many other issues if that's the path. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it, both of you. The fact that this is the path is an issue already. Hey! 
There we go. Found them all. Found them all. So now I grab those chests. I actually really want a leather cape right now. Leather trinket would be better, but oh well. ball out of my face. Oh well. You did your job. You did your job, Sir Truman. Put on a show. Antitherica Magma Mass. Ooh, that's a good combo. If I can max that out, this is the character to be killing Nama. Alright. Ooh, the armor is now penalizing me. I'm at 90% resolve instead of 100 because of it. Alright. We're going to explore the city and stay for a bit, and if we can kill... Yeah, if I can get the heirloom, then... Yeah, so if I can get the heirloom, um, that gives me the void dash and refills my health, there should be enough enemies in said heirloom to justify um, to have Antitherica full. And with a full Antitherica, ooh, jumped at just the last moment I possibly could. Ooh. All right, found Murmur. That's nice. Suddenly you find gone heads. Found gone heads, that's nice. I just realized if I spend the time to kill this guy, it will actually increase my damage output with my spells high enough that it's actually worth the while. Alright, there, I have plus 30% damage on spells. And one of the best damaging spells. Now, if I get hit, I lose this, but just don't get hit, lol. All right, well, I got hit. I think it's kind of annoying that Antitherica doesn't count boss kills. Well. Oof. Still got some value. Yep, yeah, exactly. Still got some value. Not sure the 30% was worth pausing to kill those three enemies, but... That's what I did. I'm not going to spend some time worrying about what already happened. I thought my invincibility frames would last a bit longer. Uh. Flame barrier plus emotional disregularity. If it wasn't an archer, that would be the best character not even close. But it's an archer. Well, looks like level 16 is where we're maxing out because I don't see how we get anything else. That character was supposed to be the one to kill Nama. Supposed to be. Isn't.
I believe. off its head and I still took the damage. Alright, this one I'm healing up from. Hey, yo. I have to take it. Like, there's not an option. I have to take this. means I need to find the heirloom ASAP. Problem is, this is going away from where the heirloom should be, so unless Enoch is over there, going that direction is a waste of my time. I need to be going this direction. I'm gonna reset this room. Get that slime out of my face. Woo. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this is a very convoluted setup for this area, and it's burdening me, to put simply. It's causing a lot of issues. And I really want to get... You know what? Forget it. I'm going to grab book. I don't know where book is. We're going to be extra cautious since we die in a single hit. Of course, this is the starting area with this weapon. They die in a single hit as well. Gosh. Book! I thought I went to get you. Must have forgotten. Oh well. It's just sec. What's down? So I will note that down is the less, least likely way for a book to be. But you have to take the routes you're given. There is that path to the left where it could be. So let's go check it out. It's safe because if there's an enemy in there, Ooh, found book. Alright. And I'm just gonna kill them all while I still get some money from that decision. Because it's only getting worse. It's only getting worse. Cool. 
I'll use all this health I have to grab this. It's kind of funny. Like, for the leather armor to be equal to the leather helm, you have to take five hits before dying. Which, when you play the game normally, you're like, yeah, that's kind of expected. But when you're playing the game speedrun-wise, oh boy, that's, like, that's a tall virgin to survive five hits. It's kind of funny. Alright. So yeah, in case you're wondering from masochism, I only gain the mana back when I take damage or when I shield block through. Since I do not intend to take damage, we're just going to assume that doesn't exist. And we are a strength-based build. And we have this little move right here to gain myself some mana. But yeah, every time we cast a spell, we have to make it count. There we go. Kill them all. Alright. Oh well. Mm. 790. How much what do I get a purchase with 790 gold? Well, if I find some if I find a leather equipment to get my unity, that'd be nice. But yeah. Now I have to go up here. And I will have to, without support, go down those last few rooms. Alright. There's one to the left here. Nope. Wait. Okay, so there's one to the right there. Okay. I'm gonna just about to say, like... I know I got some bad options, but... Can't be that bad. There we are. Just really quick. There's Enoch 2. Awesome. Job done. Awesome. Okay. We actually... Can pull this run all back together again. Appreciated. Appreciated. You can actually pull it all together. Ooh. And Sir Hounds Bargain, plus I already have good strength. Feels good, man. Feels good. Gonna make climbing the Sun Tower, like, nigh impossible, just due to survivability, but... Everything else. Everything else. Alright. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it is faster... To go upstairs to go grab Enoch and then um, it is faster to do this than it is to return to main menu because you have they have to re reload the entirety of the sticky and study when you teleport like that Alright, moving 
да? I'm like, I kicked off the thorns in a bad way. Sad because I had. Oh, that's why I was a draw distance. Did not know that. All right. Whatever. I guess that spells draw distance. Yeah, let's see. Each attack is doing 84 times 2, so they're each dealing 160-something damage. So the difference between 190 and 270 is no negligible. So we're just facing Enoch, knowing that we die in two hits. And that does not change from having more health. In we go. Let's do this. Don't then mess you up. I'm just gonna shield dash to get myself some mana before I kill them. Because, yeah, it's refreshing before this fight. Literally just before this fight. I was intentional, again I wanted to get to 100 mana. Specifically 100 mana is important because it allows me to break through the walls to get my damage boost for Irad, even if this character dies here. Alright, 1725, nice gold, I actually can purchase some upgrades. Alright, so I'm just like trying to think mentally how much health I'm going to need. I return! Glad to have you back, Krakatsal. Glad to have you back. Ah. Uh. So I'm just trying to math out right now how much health I'm going to need since I have um, the armor now to... Yeah, I think I can be down one or two vitality for the duelist. Thank goodness that was one shot. Did I get a crit? Is that why that one shot? Probably. Oh. That's why it's good to check the map.
Use that just to reset. I'm gonna still come up here because it's probably safer entry point because I'm above those enemies there. Reset these enemies. Might have actually been a mistake. Yep. Now I reset the enemies. One more up. Or two more up, I guess. Alright. Get used to. There it is. The top's there. Made it. Alright, I died in one hit to Irad, but I have everything else I need. Yeah, I had no idea they had that low HP. I knew they had low health, I just didn't realize it was that freaking low. Alright, so I cannot get hit. I cannot get hit. I could take a bad shield bash, but I cannot take damage otherwise. I might be able to take spike damage. Not so sure about that. Not gonna risk it. Just gonna have that as a backup. If things go horribly wrong. I actually hit the eyeball. Oof. Alright, well, I did get up there. I actually made it up there. Yeah, your veganism really means nothing here, so I'm happy to see it. Alright. No, 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 no. Not Ranger. Oh, because I just bought the Duelist. It's not available. Okay. Makes sense. Sucks, but makes sense. Alright. So, yeah. That means once you beat Irad... Um, once the rest of the game comes out, basically... Once we have two ball, two face... Once we have the... Boss through the door... Once we have the golden doors open... Um, there will actually be a strategy of kill Irad, then you die, specifically to get, um, a specific class with a specific fabled weapon. At least that's a possible strat.
Alright, I took one hit. I'm like, hey, that math doesn't seem to add up. And it's because I have armor, so I survived with 10 HP instead of 2. Alright. Well, we figured it out. We fixed it up. We finished the job. And we are a little late for the next game. But we did it. We did our job. We did what we needed to. We got it through. Forty-four on the dot. Nice job, Sir Tommy. I do like these perfectly round numbers. Makes it very easy to remember, especially since our PB is 38 on the dot. Alright, well, before I start the next game, I need to go take care of a few things. So I'll leave this music here, and we'll be right back. We are going to be switching over to Magic Gathering Arena. Of course, I have been loving the drafts, so I'm going to be doing more drafts. So, if you want to stick around for that, I'd love to have you. Otherwise, if you gotta go, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm gonna go take a few things, and I'll be back. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'm going to start loading up for the next game, and then I'll take care of the title. Alright, let's get the title. Mountain Realms Draft. I feel like having that I'm going to be taking the time to explain all my decisions is important in the way I draft. Oh, right, they suspended Brainstorm. Right. Yeah, fair enough. I know Brainstorm can be very strong. Alright, so I'm just going to do some setup stuff. 
so nothing good at the store. And here's the thing. With my Mastery Pass, I'm going to get a free draft token, so I'm actually going to use that draft token, which means I'm unlocking the Mastery Pass. Add a table in the speedrun tab for gear cost. Dude, nice. Nice. So we're adding these in just so I can get that. Um, not interested in any of those guys. These guys I'll open later. <laughs> okay. Dude, Demulet is pretty nice. And I I feel like like in Brawl, Tiamat has been insane in Brawl because it's just a big scary monster that draws you seven cards, you know? And then we get five of those, which we'll we'll apply all this stuff later. We'll apply all this stuff later, or we'll just apply it now. Dragon God, yep. So in case you're wondering, that's the whole thing. Timeout made all these deadly monsters and dragons. They're the person who made the chromatic dragons that Bahamut made to the other ones to compete. That was I feel like the flashes glitch, the flashiness glitched there. So now I'm just trying to figure out which one of these I want to get next. Yeah, there we are. That's the one I want to get next. Right, so the thing is, you have to start from one side and work your way up. And, like, these... These card backs are just so much better than any of the other things you could get from these Mastery Passes. So... I think of the rest of them... I want this green... Yeah, I want this one of the next one. So I'll start working my way there. Alright. Whew. Well, let's not keep people waiting needlessly. Get more premiere drafts. Hey everyone, welcome back to more Premier Drafts in the Forgotten Realms. Our last two drafts went okay, but could have gone much better. They could have gone much better. We went three wins and four wins respectively. Which I am, you know, that's something that people should be proud of. It's just when you've been doing seven wins and six wins and stuff before that, it's a little annoying. It's a little annoying. But, oh well, oh well. We'll just keep going. We figure things out. It, basically, here's the main thing. I go for general dirtling strats, and if I don't get the cards for the dirtling strats, I don't know how to play tempo that well, especially in this format. I tried to learn last draft because we got we were we were basically we were given all the red cards, and red doesn't really dirtle very well. So there's that. Also, I'm not going to force it, but if we could get black, that'd be pretty cool because we have not seen black at all. All right, bag of holding. Of course, I love me my bags, bags of holding. All right, so here. This turns every one of our creatures into a combat trick. This is just like it sits around and it is a combat trick. It's an early game trigger. It gives you treasure, if that's valuable. I have... This is not a bomb, but I'd be surprised if this wasn't good. Otherwise, we have amazing white cards. Plate armor, planar ally, priest of ancient lore. All three white cards that are available are, the, are some of the best white cards you can get. We also have a Bag of Holding if we want to go more controlling. Hunter's Mark, which is great. Manticore, which is great. Like, I did ask for black, so I guess we're going Forsworn Paladin. I do want to see how Forsworn Paladin plays off. This is not a bomb, and that makes me a little nervous. That being said, it might still be good. The fact that you can make it... If I have a treasure token stay around, and I attack with Forsworn, it could be a two for one using that treasure token. That is so good. That has to be good. That has to be good, right? So I think Force Order Paladin is definitely the pick. I hope the bag of ro holding rotates. Um, otherwise, do note there are some good white cards. Tarask. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Skullport Merchant. This card is the Dirtle card. This card, you sacrifice treasure tokens and draw cards, and you win the game off of that so often. Um, like, yeah, and it's a one-drop. It's like, there's nothing bad about this card. There's just nothing exceptional. Everything's good, and that's what makes this card good. Tarask is funny. I might actually, if, if Tarask rotates, I could probably go black-green treasures ramping into Tarask as my win condition. Otherwise, Skullport Merchant, just to be clear, the fact that you could sacrifice treasures to draw cards and it generates treasures itself 
makes this insane. Both of these have triggers that are instant speed, which also makes me push towards more instant speed stuff if I want to do that. I should note that Bar the Gate's available. More white removal, which is good. Yeah, we got some good stuff possibly coming back for white. But that also means that someone to my left is probably going to go white because they're seeing all this good white stuff coming around. And then we go, and then the Tarrasque, which is hilariously awesome. Whatever their uncommon was must have been good. I still think Tarrasque is worth playing, even if you can't pull that stuff off. Alright, Ray of Frost, Wandering Troubadour. Hmm. I still, I do think it's one of these uncommons. This is kind of removal. It, I have been feeling the pain of this not actually being removal, because like for Forsworn, you could still use that three mana pump spell. For Skullport, you could still use the Sacrifice Treasures. So, Ray of Frost is a two mana removal at instant speed. And these are two two mana plays at instant speed, which are pretty good. But then Wandering Troubadour, you just play it, it's a four mana four two, it's hard to attack into, and it ventures into dungeons. So, it's kind of tough between these two. I'm going to pick the Wandering Troubadour, banking that someone's actually going to rotate, um, that these people are going to somehow rotate to Rask back to me, but it's kind of a weird play. I'm going to go with the Troubadour still, but I do want to try Black Green. Black Green is usually my favorite color when I'm just doing my own colors in other formats, so... Alright, Plate Armor is a great finisher, and we do already know there's a Plate Armor rotated around. That being said, Precipitous drop is a removal in these colors it's ventures into dungeons and note that venturing into dungeons can generate treasure tokens um both dungeon of the mad mage and the other one generates treasure tokens Oof. so do i keep going venture or do i grab the plate armor knowing that i think i'm going to actually grab precipitous drop i think like it's such a good card and while plate armor is also a good card this already plays in my colors with the cards we got in black it Okay, here's the thing. Because these make treasure tokens, it's good enough to splash black right now. We can go three colors splashing black, or splashing another color with black. In other words, I think we try to cut off black, prevent my opponents from playing black. Alright. So I'm not sure if I want white. White has been gained some great cards rotated around to it. Um, I will say with these two, having two mana open on my turn is great. So this be a two mana play is awesome. But this is just a Death Toucher when it attacks. It's a bear that becomes a Death Toucher that randomly can become First Strike Death Toucher. And it's the last black card here. As I said, I want to cut off black. The reason I want to cut off black is preventing other people from playing my color, because I want to commit to that color, it looks like. So, by forcing myself to take the good black cards when there's tough options, it makes it so less people, f like, they don't have as many good black cards to choose from, which makes it more likely that I could just keep all the black cards, effectively. It's also worth knowing that I think this is the second Evolving Wilds. If I can pick nine pick of Evolving Wilds, that's definitely a good decision. Um, Steadfast Paladin is not bad at all. Clattering Skeletons is another venture. Get myself more four-man adventures. So it's between Paladin and Clattering Skeletons. Mm. I'm sticking to my strategy of cutting off black. Steadfast Paladin... Like, I think we want to go black-white. I think we do want to go black-white, but we need to cut off black while we still can. And that's what I want, so that I'm prioritizing that first. That being said, by all means, someone could be like, hey, look at all these awesome white cards. You should be white. White over black. I'm, I'm already committed to black. I'm sticking with black. I'm cutting it off. Uh. All right. Between these options, so, because we have Forsworn Paladin and Schoolport Merchant, as I said, having two mana open is a lot more valuable, and therefore, I actually like the bull strength here. Bayful Beholder is Enchantment Destruction. That, that's an important thing. It's either a finisher or Enchantment Destruction in the late games. Otherwise, it is a kind of weird body. Um, do I just want to take it to truly cut off black is the main issue. Oh my gosh, there's a... Okay, never mind. We're, let's not blind ourselves. There's a Burning Hands in here. Burning Hands is just premium removal. Jaded Sellsword, um... Gosh. Yeah, just premium, uncommon, red removal. And it made it all the way through. That's... That's surprising. Alright, Hired Hexblade, with all my treasure... With the treasure the Forcer and Paladin wants to make. 
does um, give me a card draw. This regenerates creatures and ventures, which with my venturing is nice. And then I have the Beholder. I think it's one of these two. I'm just trying. I'm just going to pick this one because we can always use more bears in the early game. All right. Oh, this is my pack again. And no one took the green removal. No one took the green removal. I think that's a signal. There were some, like my, my pack had amazing good cards. All right. So two signals worth noting here. One, no one took the green removal. Two, they took all three of the amazing white cards. So I think white closed off and green is open. I think that's what that signal tells me. So, I'm going to move with that as my signal. Bulette. I could take Bar the Gate and still keep myself open for blue, but I think I'm not going to. Um, Bulette is still a win condition. Um, it does mean we are starting to pack up in four drops where I don't want to, because this is still a win condition, so I'm not sad picking that over Bar the Gate. All right. Mimic. Leather Armor or Plus 2 Mace? Um, leather Armor definitely did not seem to work as well as I hoped. This is a treasure, worst case. It leaves 2 mana open, I have a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> Devour Intellect is just a bad card. Okay, just flat out, it's a bad card. I'm going to put Shocky Glass in my sideboard. I'd rather have that than Devour Intellect. Alright, Psychic Mimic. Second Shocking Grasp. So, I can this deck support that? Every other card is, like, white or blue. So this could draw me... Se lose seven life, draw seven cards is basically what that card says. This format, there's... I don't think I'll survive if I... Yeah, it's like... How can this card not be good? At the same time... Can I survive taking seven damage? This format, ha that's actually a question that I don't normally ask. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take Asmodeus. I, I'm going to go de Demon Pact, it seems. Oath of, of, Oath of the Forsworn, all that sort of jive. Because, yeah, that will win me games. Alright. 50 feet of rope. Manticore. Yeah, I think I've cut off um, black well enough. So now it's just the question of, do I want to go... So... We have three green cards, two of which are really good, and one is okay. Then I have a blue, red card that's amazing, another red that's pretty amazing, that's available to me. Improvised weaponry is nice. 50 feet of rope is the safe pick, but I'm not sure the safe pick's what I need to be get doing. All my green cards were four drops, that's kind of hilarious. Let's see what auto picks for me. Is it the cast channeler or the 50 feet of rope? Alright. Let's go with it. See how my red does. I might actually be able to go red green because I have so many tokens. Okay. Premium red removal. Yep, I think that's enough to say we're red. Because every red card is premium that we've picked. And the fact that we are getting these premium cards so late is a big signal. And Zalto is a really weird card that might actually make it back if I just don't touch it. Um, it is a rare, but it's one of those three health minions that's just very vulnerable, where this is just a kill spell. It's a premium kill. Alright. Thieves Tools or Deadly Disputes? So Deadly Dispute ends up being draw two cards a lot of the time. Um, Thieves Tools, on the other hand... Um, allows what creatures to get through? Lightfoot Rogue? Hexblade? Yeah, nothing notable with Thieves' Souls yet. So I'm going to go with Deadly Dispute first because it's a safer pick because I could sacrifice a treasure. If I have a treasure token, this basically says two mana draw two cards. So I'm going to pick that first. Alright. Hired Hexblade as another two drop? Let's see. We have one, two... And then we have two removal. Higher Tax Blade is a safe two drop. Um, price of Loyalty is... Price of Loyalty wins games. I will note that Price of Loyalty can win games. But I think we'll get another Price of Loyalty. Thieves Tools is pretty good. I do know that. But there's nothing that my deck really wants with that. 
and the Hexblades are still bears, and I could use early game protection. And as I get in the late game, I get treasures, which allows them to do their job. Alright, I think this deck wants Unexpected Windfall. Yeah, I think this deck has enough treasure support, enough treasure desire, that we want Unexpected Windfall. Two Hired Hexblades, um... Yeah, two Hired Hexblades, a Skullport Merchant, a Forsworn Paladin. I think we want the Unexpected Windfall. Either that, or the Spiked Pit Trap. And while Spiked Pit Trap is not bad by any means, Unexpected Windfall gets us two treasure tokens and cycles through our deck. It's at instant speed, so we can wait. Alright. <laughs> Improvised Weaponry or Dungeon Map. This is actually tough. Dungeon Map is going to allow us to venture a bunch, but it's only as a sorcery. I think we pick the Improvised Weaponry because it is also removal. But yeah, this deck is looking sick. This deck is looking amazing. Oh, I get my Bag of Holding! Oh my gosh, I always love having one Bag of Holding in all my decks. Ah... Uh, Love Bag of Holding. And it's two mana left open, which is exactly how I want things to... I'm thinking we pick the dungeon map as well. Jade's Cell Sword is definitely good, but I think we pick the dungeon map as well. Yep. Boots of Speed give something... So, a single boost of speed seems pretty... Like, with Chaos Channeler and, and like stuff like that, Boots of Speed can be very threatening. Um, but I think we go with Rope. I just like, I just really like these ropes, sort of cards. Ew. I think we actually take the charm sleep in case we end up somehow having a way to splash blue. Because we have a full set. We have three shocking grasps, man. We have three shocking grasps. If we end up getting more aggressive, splashing and being blue black instead, or like blue red or something like that. Yep, all the good artifacts. I will say the 50 feet of rope might have been overboard, but, like, between this and the boots, I do like this over boots. Because this stop, there are actually some walls in this format, and, yeah. Monk class, Ray of Frost, Red Dragon. Well, I think it's going to be Red Dragon. Let me look at the rest of the cards first. Alright, I looked at the rest of the cards. It's Red Dragon. Now let's look at what I'm going to pick if something goes bad. Valor Singer is fine. Fate's Reversal is nice. I think this is going to rotate back, so I'll get a Fate's Reversal on my deck. Um, yeah, I think that's going to end up what's going in. So let's pick the Red Dragon. You're not technically locked into Red, but Red is great. Demogorgon's Clutches is a discard spell that most people probably don't play around. Hoarding Ogre is also really good. I think there's a lot of really good picks if this comes back around. Eyes, I'm willing to take. Fates, I'm willing to take. Ogre, I'm willing... Yeah, there's four picks that I'm willing to take. And then also Treasure Chest, which I don't really want, because I don't really have ways to make that little dice better, but I have as an option. Magic Missile or Dragon's Fire? Honestly, the Instant Speed Dragon's Fire might make it better than Magic Missile. Um, but that's a tough question. Which of these is better? Yep. Yeah. Dude, this is Red Black Treasures that was just given all the removal. Like, Magic Missile or Dragon's Fire. So I think, and this sounds a little crazy, I think we picked Dragon's Fire. One, because it's a two-mana instant speed spell. But two, I don't think there's many people going red, and the double red of Magic Missile might scare them off, allowing me to pick this safely. So I think I might get Magic Missile rotated back, as absurd as that sounds. Alright. So, normally I'd say Drider is a bad card because you can't get it through, but we have one, two, three, four early game kill spells. We have enough threats that they need to take care of. Yeah, we have five early game kill spells. One, two, three, four, five. So I think we actually could get the Drider through, and if it gets through, it's devastating. That and Critical Hit is also a card. It's also a card, but I'm going to put Drider first. And that's our first 5 drop. Alright, let's see. Javelinier, I don't think we're that aggressive. Ghoul is pretty nice. Alright, Eyes of the Bullholder is a kill spell. And Goblin Morningstar? So, here's the thing. This is a 2 mana 2 one a lot of times. I think that's how I want to play it. It's 2 mana 2 one. The fact that it gains Trample, and I just equip that to like a Drider. Or Asmodeus. I think Goblin Morningstar is where I want to be. 
Ooh. Gosh. Starting to get to a point where I have too many good cards. Alright, so how many two drops do I have? So let's assume the 50 feet of rope doesn't make it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven two drops. Alright. I don't need more hired hex blades. No, no. We're going to pick Be Beholder before we pick Boulette. I just don't know if I want Beholder. Alright. Manticore or Hoarding Ogre? Hoarding Ogre gives me more treasures. Um, yeah, there's definitely space in my 4-drop slot for that. So, it's just a question of which one. This gives me more treasures if it attacks in. Alright, you auto-select the Manticore. Oh, and I have a bunch of... I can Burning Hands into Manticore for a bigger threat. I like that. More Improvised Weaponry. <laughs> I mean, I can't turn it down, can I? Alright, this is my pack being brought back. And it looks like we get a Fate's Reversal if we want it. I think we want it. I think we have enough 3-drops. Oh my gosh. This is actually pretty cool. I feel like I did some math wrong and I... This deck is too good to be true, because it's not true. Alright. I think I just pick a second Eyes of the Beholder. The removal's very good. Even if it's a 6-mana removal, it is an instant speed 6-mana removal. Alright. If I end up going blue, somehow. If I want it, somehow. If I want it, somehow. I think it's a little late for green. Alright. Let's look at this deck. So we need to get rid of four cards. Alright, so let's see. Force Roll and Paladin, Bag of Holding. That is all the two I need. Uh, Mimic can go. Mimic can go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven two drops, effectively, plus a Force Roll Paladin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like, oh man. Oh man. This is a beautiful deck. What do I even rip out? I guess the Unexpected Windfall? Um, do I have another way to create treasures? Oh, I didn't take the Hoarding Ogre, so no. But I think the Unexpected Windfall is actually one of the weak links here. Just everything's strong. Take out Unexpected Windfall. One of the eyes. One of the only one. I think we take out the Clattering Skeletons. Like, the Clattering Skeletons is a very good card, but it's like... We have all. We will get the early game board, and then we just get Chaos Channeler for card advantage. We get Asmodeus for card advantage. We get Bag of Holding for card advantage. We get all the card advantage. Yeah. I hope this deck is as good as it seems. I will not deny that. Asmodeus might want a more aggressive curve, and if that's the case, we have not much to offer to Asmodeus. I guess a 50 feet of rope. Well, I think the car if any card is to be revealed, it's Asmodeus. And this is our... Rakdos removal. <laughs> Pact of Death. Yeah, Fiend Pact Warlock. This is actually what a Fiend... Um... Eldritch Blast. Yeah, this is how an Eldritch Blast Fiend Black. Um... Yeah. So, Eldritch Blast Fiend Pact Warlock. This is exactly what it looked like. Just a bunch of burn for a distance, and then you just have some great evil bargains later. I don't know much, but it seems insane. Yeah, it seems insane. I will state that if I get my mana on, this thing could go very far south, but it's like, we have three early game remo- We have three two mana removals, two improvised weaponries. This might be a weak slot spot. This might be a weak spot, but like, that kills fiends in this format? This turns that into card draw? Like, it has to be good, right? Ugh. It has to be good. Yeah. Will not deny, Asmodeus is going to be godly expensive. Alright. So here's the theme. Three cards, three lands, four non-lands. 
But my first play is on turn four. I cannot keep that hand as good as it looks. Yeah. Alright. Because, like, that looked like a perfect hand, but there was zero plays. Therefore, it was not a good hand. Alright. I'm going to put Asmodeus into the bag of holding. Shove the demon into... Get in the bag. I'm willing to make this trade. Are you? Sounds good. And I'm going to get a goblin. Let's get a goblin with a mooring star. That'd be nice. Darn it. Oh, well. If I could get a land, I can Fate's Reversal, bring that back into my hand, and venture for a scry. And then still equip the mooring star if I want to. I might have to bag of holding to try to get myself the land. Nope, we got the land anyways. Never, never unlucky. I feel like I should save the Fates Reversal for a better time, basically. They have a counterspell. They're holding a counterspell. Yeah, I'm going to put Asmodeus in the bag. And we're just going to equip the Goblin Morningstar. Like, I have... That has to be a Bar the Gates, or uh, you find the Villain's Lair. There's two common 3-mana instant speed counterspells. That's what they have to be holding up. And one of them has the alternate theme of drawing two cards and discarding two cards. So that's what... That's had to be what was there. Get in the bag, you demon! <laughs> I am the great Asmodeus. All type leads worship me. That's great at all, but get in the bag. <laughs> Alright. You want to encounter my dungeon map? Does that sound good to you? I still get to use my bag of holding. Yeah, it's holding up. They're really considering it. They're really considering it. Yep. Told you. Told you. Counterspell was sitting there. They now know Asmodeus is in the bag. Big problem is this is technically exiled. So if I lose my bag, Asmodeus poofs from existence. Alright. Is their deck just a thousand counter spells? Like, I'm trying to think how they can afford to have Arcane Investigators and just leaving three mana open every turn. You know I'm attacking in. Alright. And honestly, popping the bag here isn't even bad. What are they going to do? Sign of Stygia? Yeah, one of the good things about blue is there's a bunch of common... 3 mana instant speed effects. One's a 3 mana 2. One, two are counter spells. Like, there are some good 2 mana free effects. Alright, so here's the theme. They only have 2 mana open. They can't actually, um... They can't actually counter the red dragon if I get a if I get a land if I can get a land soon. Alright, so I have to put a land in the bag so that I can draw land here. Now I still do that anyways because the Alright. If it's green. Alright. So I could burning hands, kill the arcane investigator, attack with a forsworn power or just yeah, I'm just gonna leave up the forsworn so it could create treasure tokens. Yeah, I'm happy with this position. 
that's the great theme. Because of all these activated abilities, I'm fine just leaving Forsworn up for as a combat trick. You think you're in the late game powerhouse position. Keep in mind, you know what's in my bag. <laughs> I've got this game in the bag! <laughs> Alright. You gonna attack with a clever conjure? Alright. Let's actually burning hands the arcane investigator first. I'm assuming they're leaving that six mana to draw a card. So playing the burning hands now actually forces their hand to decide whether they want to counter it or do the effect. And I'm actually going to pay a life create a treasure. Yeah, I think forcing them to discard, seeing what forcing them to act is very positive for me. So they have to counter Demogorgon's clutches, basically. That being said, I have brought myself to a position where they could bounce the Bag of Holding and ruin my day, but I think that's okay. Alright. They could have you come to a river on my back. That's actually a thing they could have done. So if I attack with this goblin and they block, they took out Shocking Grasp and you come to a river, so... Nah, I'm just gonna wait. I can use Forsworn to create treasure tokens. Ah, I see. But I could always shove more things in the back, I could always create more treasures. Alright. Surely they don't have more three mana counter spells right now. They had to discard one. They had to get rid of you come to a river. They do they are definitely the blue flash deck, but surely this is it for them. Surely they're running low on resources. And if they attack with their two three, I can block with my morning star guy. And There we go. That's a trade that I'm okay with. Alright. So they have two mana left open. You got a counter this? Nope. There was no pause. I do not think they have a counter spell in hand. So now all I gotta do is draw a land. Alright, well I'm actually glad I played that now, while Chaos Channeler was the big creature and not Red Dragon. And I do have removal. I do have plenty of removal in my deck. Alright, that being said, I do not have the sixth land for Red Dragon. It's in the back of holding currently. Alright. If they attack with Chaos Channeler, I'm laying it through. If they kill, manage to kill my Red Dragon, I can Bag of Holding, Fate's Reversal it back to my hand. Like, Alright, if they attack with the... I mean, how are they going to equip this? Alright, I'll block the Ginny Weed Seer with my Red Dragon. I'm okay with that trade. Yep, that's exactly how I would do it too. Good job. Wizard class and island. That's a good... That wizard class is very powerful for them. Well done. Very lucky there. And the... I, I didn't realize the island was playable. Yeah. That was good for them. I do have a bunch of removal. If I can remove that mind flayer, I'm in a good position. Alright. So let's see. If I pay four, put these in my hand, Fates Reversal, the Red Dragon, and... Hmm. The question is, is it time to pop the Bag of Holding, really? 
They definitely applied a lot of pressure thanks to the Chaos Channel, or thanks to the Mind Flayer. There are, let's see, one, let's see, one. There are a bunch of, there are a bunch of kill spells, which will give me my Chaos Channeler back, which is what I'm thinking about, in case you're wondering. I can't really activate Asmodeus anyways. They're now, I'm now on the pressure. So that's not even an option. I'm going for it. There it is, but it's a little expensive, unfortunately. So I have to not equip this so that Force Storm Paladin can become a 3 1 and prevent the Mind Flayer from attacking. Ugh. I'm in a lot of bad. There's a lot of places. That Mind Flayer put me in a very bad position. It needs to die ASAP. Oh no. I think that's game. I think that's enough pressure that I cannot win the game from here. I have like, f yeah, I have five removal spells still in my deck. So, like, this is just them getting their cards before I got mine, I'm going to say. Yeah, and here's the thing. So, if they copy the Chaos Channeler, it comes to play on their hand. I'm not giving up. Don't worry. I'm not giving up. I just don't see how I come back from this. Because I'm at one health. They have... Like, look at this board state, and know I'm at one health. You should have popped the back the first time. It wouldn't have actually solved this equation. Ugh. That only brings back the tapped one. Alright, that's good to know. At least I know that information for now. The fact that they had an air elemental to bounce my um, creature just put me under so much pressure that even if I popped the back, it would have made no difference. It would have made no difference. I just needed to draw kill spells, and I drew through quite a bit of my deck, so I think I should have drawn more. Yeah, I drew through half my deck, one, two, one, two of my five kill spells. Yeah, I got two of my five kill spells in half my deck, so I guess that's actually a round average. It's just a little below, it's slightly below average, so. He had the dirtlier deck. Well, actually, if he dirtled more, hmm. I feel like my deck's pretty dirtily itself. Hmm. But yeah, the Eyes of the Beholder actually played very poorly, being 6 mana when I did not have that mana to spare. And then yeah, Mind Flayer is a bomb in this format. If they play Mind Flayer and you don't have an answer to it, it just takes your best creature. Like, I want you to consider that. They had a 5-mana card that it plays a strong body and takes the best creature. So, when you... When they play their bomb... Also, I just realized I had to mulligan that game. Hmm. Interesting. Just a lot of considerations. A lot of considerations. Dr. Tungus. Man of culture, I see. Man of culture. So, such a man of culture, it would not allow me to defeat them. They had to just give Dr. Tungus a moment. Alright. Next one will be an easy game. Let's hope, Vibes. Let's hope. I will state this. There is a theme. This format has a lot of bombs. And Asmodeus, unless I get things set up, is not a bomb. the bomb that needs to be. My bomb is Asmodeus, and it's not a bomb that you play and you win. It's a bomb you play in a long game. The game goes longer, and then you win. I have to keep that in mind. All right. I play the mountain first just to make sure I don't mess up and make it so I can't play my Goblin Morningstar. Because I think, yeah, they're going to play nothing, so I'm playing Goblin Morningstar now. There we are. Because 
I just would rather have that over the hired hex blade right now. Alright. I'll attack. You want to trade your 2-2 two -two with my 1-1? One -one? I'm more than happy to. Awesome. And I'll play my own higher text blade. Alright. Now I have both... I can either equip the Morningstar and swing in, or I can Dragon's Fire. Alright. I like Dragon's Firing that, swing in, and... I ha Here's the question. Do I go Hyper... Tempo, or do I go Hyper Control? Um, I'm going to go Hyper Tempo. If he wants to trade with my fa the Fane Blade for this, I'm happy. And I'm just going to kill this before he can feign death, the Yuanti. I did want to hope for them to use a combat trick, but I just realized there's a black combat trick that's going to keep that thing alright, and I want to not play into it. All right now I gotta start triggering the bag. Use my card advantage to it as an advantage. I'm actually gonna put this Forsworn Paladin in there because I get to play Asmodeus. All right, they need an answer. Alright, this is where Asmodeus wins the game. What's the card? Oh, it's face down, right. Alright, so next turn, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three cards, I'm going to Bag of Holding, and then I'm going to um, return all Exile cards. So I'm just going to wait my turn. Because I'm about to draw an entire hand. Here's another thing. If they manage to kill Asmodeus, I can in response to them about to die, draw seven cards. Wait. No, I have to kill it myself. I have to put draw seven cards on the stack after the death. Never mind. One of the things I can do is I can draw a card and discard a card with Bag of Holding. It just goes under Asmodeus. Nothing gets discarded. I just put it in the hand. So. All right. My turn. Alright, so let's start with draw seven cards. Ninth card. And let's lose half our health and get ourselves a hand. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. Mad with power. That's a fair assessment. That seems busted. That's because it is. <laughs> Let's kill the Hobgoblin Captain real fast. Um, I'm going to go Lost Mine. Yeah, I like that card. Gonna attack with this. If they block to kill, I get a kill two of theirs in the process. Alright, they don't. Shall I Chaos Channeler? Shall I Red Dragon? Shall I, I could Dungeon Map and still Skullport Merchant. Um Yeah, just Casually draw eight cards at once mid game. Precisely. Precisely. You only have five mana. <laughs> yep. Alright. I'm going to use that. Play Skullport Merchant.
And yeah, I'm willing to lose whatever cards in there for as Deus's effect. All right. Attack with both. Sacrifice the zombie ogre to kill the hexblade. I'm assuming. Nope. Nope. Let's see it. You have a manticore of your own? That's my assumption. But if you play a manticore of your own, you put yourself in a very bad spot. I want... Please, please play manticore. Because here's what happens. That leaves them with very little mana left over. I equip Goblin Mace to Asmodeus. Attack. And... Okay, okay. Makes a bit more sense. Alright. Alright. Well, here's the thing. I think I, I st think I still win next turn. They didn't kill with that. Oh. Oh. You know, if I was paying attention, I could have saw that coming. I thought, for some reason, I thought Warlock Class was still at level 2. For some reason, I thought Warlock Class was still at level 2. That was my mistake. Oh my gosh, I feel bad. That was a game that I literally block with both. I equip the Morning Star to Asmodeus, attack in, play Red Dragon, I win. I had lethal there if I just played for, for my out. If I just played for lethal, I had lethal there. Oh, That was my fault entirely, and that makes me annoyed. Well, we now have to get 7 wins in a row. And yes, Asmodeus was a good card. Don't let, don't challenge me on that. It drew me, it drew me my entire deck. I just didn't see the loss on the wall. That's all it was. Alright, I have Forsworn Paladin. I get a tap, on turn two I get a tap, it's great treasure. Turn three I get to play Skullport. Yeah, this is a good hand. Mmm. I'm still kind of in fear, annoyed at myself for that. Alright. Troubles of magic. Not seeing the card that's directly in front of you. Huh. <sighs> So yeah, with this plus Skullport Merchant, we're going to have all the card draw we need, I think. And they're going to get all the card advantage they need, it seems. So yeah, I do not think that's worth Precipitous dropping. I think I'd rather just play Skullport and start chumping. I'll Precipitous drop the flyer they might play this turn. Huh. Hmm. Okay. So, I was I did so poorly that I'm now facing a bronze player. I just realized. I mean, you, you don't do that and not attack. Yeah, I honestly think that I have enough other ways of getting card draw that my mistake is the Bag of Holding, believe it or not. I think the Bag of Holding is actually the weak link in this deck. If I draw a land, I can actually use these treasures to play Red Dragon. I think the Teppo gain from that might win me the game. Are they mana ruined? Yeah, I think... I mean, I'm not going to jinx it, but I think just the way they've been playing... The way this has been working out. This is this game is mine to win. Alright, 
So they do have mana. They do have mana. So they're going to scry looking for their big scary bomb to try to put on the top of the deck. Yep. As expected. Seriously, theme, do I play Red Dragon or Chaos Channeler if I draw a land? Alright, so it wasn't the bomb. That's good for me. Oh, they have a Spike Pit Trap. So we do not play Dragon, we play Chaos Channeler. Attack first. Yep. So in case you're wondering, every single one of these cards is a pretty darn good card to have in this format. So, I do look intimidating. Iron Golem. Alright, so I get attack with Chaos Channeler and trade safely. I could turn it into a 3-1, and then I attack with Skullport, and it's forced to block, but then it still doesn't end well for me. Hmm. I'm fine with trading my Chaos Channeler for their Iron Golem. I'm going to start with that, actually. Before I declare combat, you're going to be casting something? Oh no, they just wanted to get rid of their mana. Now they don't have the wild shape combat trick. So now I don't have to worry about the Scaled Herbalist trading with it. Yep, so Iron Golem's forced to block. And I'm going to just let the Hired Hexblade go. Oh, no, 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 it's a... When you use the treasure to cast it. Ooh, so I can actually Demogorgon's Clutches, get rid of their hand. So now they don't have a hand, and they mill. I probably should have attacked with Forsworn Paladin there as well. Okay, hold up. I just di made them discard their old Gnawbone. That must hurt. Okay. Well. Yep. Usually you're supposed to hold that up to bluff, but I'll accept your mistake here, sir. Nimical. But yeah, I took... Uh, I can't believe... I still am trying... This game is helping me process and get over my loss of last game. Are they about to spike to pit trap my Forsworn Paladin? Let's see what they kill. They're supposed to kill the Skullport Merchant, by the way. As far as I can tell. Nope. Alright. Let's... Um, yeah, I like that. So, sacrifice another creature. Gonna sacrifice that. Draw a card. Then I can still Precipitous Drop. So yeah, how if they block with Skeleton Herbalist, I'll just Precipitous Drop and kill it. Because I might as well at this point. I, it's just preventing me from actually killing them.
Game just said you should feel bad, but here's here so you can feel better. Yeah. I appreciate it, game. I appreciate it. Not Tomb of Annihilation. Not Tomb of Annihilation. Alright. Thing is, thanks to Manticore, even if they get a big creature. Still win in the end. I think I still attack with both. Yeah. Because. Alright. So they trade the game. And I get out a red dragon. Alright. Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. Trade this for black. To cast the exploit. Alright. I'm just going to draw now. I'm not going to use the Manticore because that fiend has a whole hexproof issue. Do I just improvise weaponry on their face? I think the answer is yes. Like, I could have saved that with Manticore as a kill spell if they have a flyer, but they're, I don't think that's a threat right now. And, yeah, I'd rather just end the game, you know? See if I can draw damage. Nope. Alright, attack with both. They have to block the iron X by with the investigator. Perfectly fine. Now they have one health. And I just play Asmodeus, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Like, forget everything else. Asmodeus is a 6-6, six, six, alright? Not gonna save you, buddy. You create a treasure token or a goblin. Yep. Don't worry, I have Asmodeus. This is not. Oh well. Well, there's my first win. Should have been my second win, but. I made a boo-boo. I didn't read Warlock class. It didn't process that it was already at level 2. Yep. That's the thing. 6 mana 6-6 six, six is just an amazing stat block in this format. So... Like, honestly, just playing Asmodeus as a Hail Giant Herd Gorger of sorts is perfectly acceptable sometimes. Alright, Pongo's first. We have a Dragon's Fire, a single land, and we have a Perceptive's Drop and an Improvised Weaponry. We're on the play. We're on the draw, so I'm happy having the chance at another land. Yep. Alright. Go right ahead. Oh, you can just play this to Venture. Actually, decline. Decline. Because I'd rather Perceptus drop that. Because it lines up perfectly. Dies to that, allows me to venture. Goblin Morningstar plus Dragonfire. I like that.
Oh yeah, this actually dealt four damage. Hey, that's something I didn't realize. I'm like, why is it asking me to reveal a dragon? I don't, like, we don't normally have dragons. Well, this is in a normal situation. So yeah, I could improvise the weaponry and, um, yeah, so I can attack improvised weaponry to kill the pixie guide and, or I could just attack manticore to kill the pixie guide. Yep. I wouldn't block me either. Do I just improvise weaponry their face as a way to get the treasure token? Nah, I think that's too aggressive. I think just flashing out the manticore might be worth even though I don't put a creature in with it. Alright, never mind. Never mind. Pixie Guy needs to go. They're not going to block, so I'm just going to equip the Goblin Morning Star. Because they're not going to block anyways. And now I can Dungeon Map. And now I have Red Dragon. Yep, wizard class is scary because it's now just like a bomb. But I have improvised weaponry plus manticore. And now I have red dragon. I can, let's see, improvised weaponry and use the treasure token to kill... Um, to kill whatever creature I target. I could just improvise weaponry, kill that, Demogorgon's... Cl yeah, because this causes card draw, which is a serious issue right now. Um, so do I want to play Red Dragon? Or do I want to improvise weaponry and Demogorgon's clutches? This... Okay, so this limits their, their options more, which I think is the play. Even though it's not as aggressive or powerful as Red Dragon Plus. Um, I think this is the play, yeah. I should have attacked first, actually. Because I... It would have been nice to kill the Faraday. Force them to discard cards. They had a Dragon Fire? And another Faraday. Wow. Wow. Alright, they're starting to get scary. Thank you, wizard class, for being an absurd card sometimes. No blocks this turn. So if I play this... I can Sorcery Speed, Fates Reverse, but I have no creatures in there. If I attack, I could Manticore and Sack the Treasure to Venture, which will give me a 1-1 Red Goblin. I think we just Red Dragon, force them, because if they put a plus one, plus one counter on Horny Ogre, they're not putting it elsewhere, is basically my reasoning. I'm assuming one of these is just, the one to the right is just the land. Yep, that is a smart play. I will be attacking anyways, and then the Manticore will be killing the Pixie Guide. That's the hope. Alright, you really want to do that flash speed. Not every, This card has flash, guys. They played it wrong, and they don't... Oh, Faraday. So they could attack with Faraday. Okay, that makes more sense. We are about to die, everyone. We are about to die. Oh my god, Faraday makes every card... Every flip into a card. Okay. Well. If they roll high, we just lose. That's high enough. So now they get a scry 2, draw an additional card, make it additional big threat, attack in with 12 in the air. Like, they are attacking for 12 this turn. Oh my gosh. 
we went one win. That physically hurts. This physically hurts. Especially since one of those losses was completely on- Oh my gosh, they draw an additional card. I mean, it's tap down, might as well. There's nothing small enough to Dragon's Fire anymore. Like, Burning Hands and Manticore against the Faraday, and I still die from all the creatures around it. I still lose. Still the best one to kill. Yep. Oh my gosh. Wizard class seems busted. It's really slow, but mine is a very slow deck. And really what's happening is they're just, they have all these cards that work with rolls, and all these cards that roll, and, like, Faraday is extremely powerful, but extremely hard to draft. They got two Faradays. They got two Faradays. Okay? Like, every time they draw, they make creatures bigger. It's just... And then, yes, Wizard Class, if you get it to level 5, it's busted. The problem is there's 9 mana between then and now, and... And just, yeah, you can see it's really Faraday is causing all these triggers. Like, this is an amazing synergy deck. Like, point out a bad card in this deck. Soul Knife Spy is, like, the worst card in this deck right now. As far as we've seen. They have so much card draw, so much, so many resources. Like, it's impressive that they had that many resources. Mm. But yeah, there's a lot of cards in this deck that's like, in this draft format, that if you get them, your deck becomes busted. And I made a mi I'm still sad that I made that mistake. This could have at least gone two wins. This was way better than a one-win deck. This is way... Oh. I don't think this deck has a weakness, really. It has... All this removal, it has all this... How does it... It closes out the game with with a Asmodeus, a, a Red Dragon, and a Drider. It has ways to close out the game. It has enough... It has four ways to close out the game, and five ways to get there. Like, and six ways... Like, most of the deck is getting there. Like, Back of Holding was the weakest card in this, which is... Like, I'm never disappointed with Back of Holding. How did... Okay. So let me think about the cards that I did not... That this is my first time playing them. Asmodeus did great... Just as a 6-mana six 6-6, six six, it was great. As the fact that it gave me a massive hand for some life loss was perfectly fine, I just made a mistake. This card was great. Eyes of the Beholder was way too expensive and slow. This was a bad card. I should have replaced it with a Bayful Beholder because it destroys enchantments. What next? Manticore was a bit too clunky being 4-mana and having to get deal damage to your opponent makes it very expensive. So Manticore was also not performing. Might have actually wanted with Clarion Skeletons in its place. Just as a big body that could drop down. Back of Holding underperformed as it has performed before. This was just not the deck for it. Goblin Morningstar seemed fine. Two mana, two two, and then it leaves behind a trampling force for my Dryder and Ar Asmodeus. Definitely wanted more things that could take advantage of the Morningstar effect. These cards were perfectly fine. These cards were perfectly fine. Schoolport Merchant, great. Hired Hexblade, 2 mana, 2 2, can't be bad. Faith Reversal just ended up being poor, too expensive, strangely enough. Light for Rogue, never saw. Ugh. 
Ugh. How did Force Word Paladin play? It made me a few treasures. I only used its pump ability once. Yeah, it's just, it's all the mana sync, but this format has too many mana syncs already. That's why I think what the issue with Force Word Paladin is. Alright. 100 gems. We spent 1,500 gems to get into here, and it's 100 back. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. But yeah, that's why you need to go at least three wins. Anyways, so in case you're wondering, I recently got a Mastery Pass, so we get to watch me open up all these cards. So, if you, want, if you like seeing cards get opened, here is now your opportunity. Mythic Wild Card. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oof. Frost Boil Snarl. Hmm. Alright, now we get to the strict the Forgotten Realms cards. Wild Shape just seems bad. Demoscorgon's Clutches, how did that perform? So I don't think this performed poorly, because every time they always had two cards when I drew this. The problem was they just then had draw cards. They then I was already too far behind by then. I need to figure out why I'm falling so far behind. Like, I'm getting, I have my early game tempo, and I have my late game finishers, but I need to figure out why I'm falling so far behind. By the way, Skeletor Swarming, if you ever get this in draft, splash a color. Like, if you're green-blue, splash black. If you're white-black, splash green. Like, Skeletal Swarming will win you the game when it hits the battlefield. It's one of those cards. It's one of those cards. Ugh. Yeah, I just need to, like, reevaluate what are the bombs. Because I'm getting cards that I think are bombs, and then I die. I'm getting cards that I think are value engines, and I can't use them. I just gotta figure this out. There's something, like, I'm missing. I'm missing some key piece of this format. Uh. Well, we're gonna figure it out by next time. Everyone... Have a wonderful day. I hope to catch you all later. I hope your drafts go better than mine. Have a wonderful day. I think we, yeah, we averaged losing two wins per draft. We started with a seven win draft, and we averaged losing two wins per draft. Uh, still infuriated about my game that I lost on my own play. Uh. All right, let's raid someone. Well, we got our good bro, Target Face. Get us some good vibes, play some... He's doing some Stardew Valley, something much more chill, much more relaxing, much less stressful. Uh, Alright, see you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Alright, I'm gonna start digging through the trash. I'm gonna pull Oh, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs>